Now we're going to look at the role that banks play in creating money, that they actually have an impact on increasing and decreasing the money supply through their normal actions of accepting deposits and making loans. So here we see a balance sheet for a bank. Now don't worry, this is not suddenly turned into an accounting class. But there is a point we want to make, and that is that banks look at interactions with us differently than we look at it with them. You have money that you want to put in a checking account. That is something you own. It is what we would call in accounting speak an asset. So we think of our deposits as assets, but look at banks. I have it over here with the liabilities. And when you think about it, it makes sense. Um, for them, a deposit, your $100 checking account deposit is money they owe back to you. So they consider deposits to be liabilities. And the loans, the things we consider liabilities, because we owe it back to them, look at that. They have it over there in the assets. So that's the main thing we want to understand here when we look at this balance sheet for a bank. Um, it just makes us realize that they do um, think about it from the other point of view. Another thing we want to note here is something called reserves. And reserves are sim simply deposits that the bank is keeping either physically as cash right there on the premises in its vault or on deposit with the Federal Reserve. Whether they are physically there in the bank or at the Federal Reserve, those are basically considered cash on hand for the bank. And the word we use for that is reserves. Um, and then there is a certain amount of reserves a bank is required to have, and that's called required reserves. Now, you're not going to see required reserves on the balance sheet, but it's something you can calculate. And it's basically the reserves a bank has to have on hold, again, either in their vault or at the Fed. Um, they're required to have it there by the law, by the Federal Reserve. And it is a certain percentage of the deposits that they have in their accounts. So this kind of makes sense. The Federal Reserve is basically saying, hey, if you're going to have $407,000 worth of deposits, you don't have to keep all $407,000 on hand, but you need to keep a certain percentage of that. And that percentage will tell you how much your required reserves are. So this bank maybe is required to keep 10%. And if that's the case, this bank is messing up a little bit, because look at this. If, if the required reserve ratio set by the Federal Reserve is 10%, and I just made that up, but if it is, then that would be 10% of $407,000, which 10% of that is $40,000. So that would be saying, hey, Mr., what are you, Wachovia, you need to have 10% of $400,000. You need to have $40,000 in reserves. So if that was the scenario, this bank is falling short and would need to take steps to fix it. If the required reserve ratio was 5%, then they would only need to have 20000 on hand. If that was the case, the required reserves amount was 20000 then they actually have 32000 then they have more than they need, and so there's one more term you want to be familiar with, and that is excess reserves, as, as in having extra. So if 20000 was their required reserves, this bank would have $12,749 in excess reserves. Moving on to banks creating money, what we're showing here is just if somebody walked in the door and made a $1,000 checking account deposit, their liabilities would increase by 1000 And initially, you could just say their reserves have increased by 1000 as well. Since the bank is not required to hold the full $1,000 on hand, we're going to assume for now a required reserve ratio of 10%. We're going to say that the bank would take 90% of this initial deposit and lend it out. And so that's why we say they created money, that the initial deposit was $1,000, the bank makes a loan of $900, and for right now we're showing that $900 loan as being deposited right back into the same bank, which isn't likely to be what happens. It's more likely that the $900 loan from Wachovia is taken over to the PNC bank, bank number two, and then they make a $900 deposit there and increase reserves there. And so again, this, this here is just the first step, but they're saying that from the time somebody walked in and deposited $1,000, the actions of Wachovia has led to a loan, which is deposited at PNC, and we have an extra $1,900. So the system had a $1,000 increase, and yet there's $1,900 floating around. And that system will continue to do this. That $900 deposit will be loaned out and up to the maximum amount potentially, which is 90%, and that would be another $810 loan.
So this continue for some time uh, until you have made all the maximum loans. So what we're showing here is the maximum amount a bank, well, the banks could create out of initial $1,000 deposit. We are assuming that the full amount of the loan is deposited back into the banks. They're not taking any out as cash. We are assuming that banks are loaning out the maximum, that they actually don't choose to hold more than they're required. Um, we're choosing the people, we are assuming that people are choosing to do all this borrowing. So there's a lot of assumptions here. So what we're doing with this calculation is figuring out what is the maximum amount of money that could be created if all of these things were true. And so one way to do it, of course, would be the slow iterative way here where you would come up with the different amounts until you got to the end and there's basically you know, no more being created. And apparently that would add up to 10,000. We have a better way of calculating it though. And that is using our simple deposit multiplier, the ratio of the amount of deposits created by banks to the amount of new reserves. Um, so what we want to know is this little here. This RR is the required reserves ratio that's set by the Fed. We were playing with it being 10%. And basically, mathematically, if you're adding up a bunch of iterative um, calculations like we were just lining up, it's a neat mathematical trick that you can just use one over the required reserve ratio. I'll spare you the proof on that one, but it's just a fun little math trick. So what we basically end up with, what you need to know is this formula here. If what you want to do is calculate the potential maximum change in checking account deposits, you take the change in bank reserves, which in our example has been a deposit of $1,000, and you simply multiply it by the required, res or by the simple deposit multiplier, all right? So again, just to remind us, what we are wanting to do is calculate the potential maximum change in checking account deposits, all right? So the potential maximum change in checking accounts deposits is the change in bank reserves, which can either be a deposit, in which case it'd be a positive, or a withdrawal, in which case we would simply put a negative there. And then we take that amount and multiply it by one over RR. So using the example we were doing, we had a thousand dollar deposit and we were assuming a 10% required reserve ratio. So that's one over 0 0.10, all right? When you do this, you need to be sure that you write the percentage, 10%, as a decimal like this. And then when you do the calculation, you're going to find that 1 divided by 0 0.10 is equal to 10. And 10 times 1,000 is equal to 10,000. And that was the number you saw as the potential maximum increase to the change in checking account deposits. Let me make one comment here because different problems might make different assumptions. But there's this little asterisk down here. This calculation, as performed here, is assuming we are including the initial $1,000 deposit in our maximum increase. Some books, some problems might want you to remove the initial $1,000. Um, so what am I talking about? There was a $1,000 deposit that actually happened. At the end of this process, there is a potential for an increase to the money supply could be 10,000. That 10,000 summary here included the initial $1,000 deposit. Sometimes the questions will ask you, what has been the change in the money supply after the deposit or not including the deposit? In which case you would simply say, well, the money supply has grown by 9,000, the calculated amount here minus the initial deposit. I'm usually gonna ask you for this amount. Just do the calculation and tell me the potential maximum increase of the money supply. So summing up what we have done in this lesson is just want to remind us that it is both a positive and negative impact. Um, we just worked an example where we had a $1,000 deposit, so the bank gained $1,000 in reserves. They would make the new loans, and the money supply would expand, as we saw, potentially to $10,000. Just to remind us, um, if that had been a negative negative 
$1,000 to the banking reserves. The bank had actually lost reserves because there was a withdrawal. You can do the same calculation um, and, and, and figure out how much the bank, the money supply could have contracted. So let's do something different. Let's make the required reserve ratio 20%, just to have a different number here. So now it's 1 divided by 0 0.20, and if you do that in your calculator, you see that's going to be 5. And so you end up with a negative 5,000 impact on the money supply. So if a bank lost reserves, if a withdrawal of $1,000 happens, they would do fewer loans and the money supply would essentially contract. And with a required reserve ratio of 20%, the maximum it would contract is 5,000.